I'm going to tell you some story. Oh, yeah, the time travelers, man. Oh, I tell you, man. Settle back here, have a sip of coffee, and salute to you, baby. Clink, clink, clink all the way around. We love you so. You little rock star, don't you know? Ah. You're the medicine for my heart and soul. You just kind of keep me going, don't you know? I mean, it's why I'd love to sit here and tell you tales, man. It's just so refreshing to know that, you know, somebody somewhere appreciates a little bit of that flow you've been through, don't you know? So 3,500 years in the future, which to me is 3,500 years ago, uh, somebody woke up one day. Somebody that was really unusual. You know, that had a bit of a conscious presence in them because there wasn't many people around in those days that did, you know. I'm talking 3,500 years in the future when we're all bred down to these skinny little reptilian dweebs that, you know, got the bug eyes and the dark, the gray skin and that stuff. And they're only about three, four foot tall. No glory to them at all, man. That's, that's where human beings headed for 3,500 years in the past future, okay? That's where we went. But, you know, like I said, one day one of us woke up and says, Hey, man, this ain't right. No one then headed for the mountains, you know, because none of them did. All of them were like little server drones, man, kind of like bees in a beehive, man. They just did what they were told and served and were happy and content, you know. And nobody had to, you know, do anything with them. They needed minimal service, you know. They were just awesome little you know, uh, stick critters, man. The stick man. Yeah. Oh, the fire went out already. How about that, man? Well, guess what? I'm plenty warm inside. I think that fire just transferred into our hearts, you know? So there this little gray person was 3,500 years in the future as whatever's left of the human genome and not very much in there, is there? But I not that this one could wake up, you know, and then a few others woke up. And, you know, they all headed for the mountains just intuitively. They could hear you up on top of that mountain playing that rock and roll, man, medicine for the heart. And so free the earth, don't you know? Well, huh, that's your mission, baby. That's what you've been given in this commission. Get your butt back up on that mountain, man, and play that rock and roll, okay? <laughs> so those in 3,500 years in the future, well, I mean, you know, they got enough technological uh, existence. It's really spiritual, but multidimensional presence, put it that way, that, you know, they can easily move through the 3D back in time or forward in or whatever, you know what I mean? Of course, when you're moving in future, it's difficult because there's so many different timelines you know gazillions of them man <laughs> but there's only one you're gonna live you know out of all those gazillions yet you live all the gazillion with it there's all the possibilities being fulfilled but there is a way of centering that experience so that none of it is given in travesty or tragedy and that the heart is always in triumph in every moment that we live see but that's where we're headed, man, because those dudes and dudettes there 3,500 years in the future came back to the past and tweaked it a bit when nobody was looking. You know, they made it look like they were doing totally something else. It was a big disguise program. Just like, you know, you think the bad guys are good at hiding shit? Oh, they're clumsy as hell because we all know, see, you know. Sometimes you lack the literal proof because they'll, they'll, they'll shoot you down if you come around taking shit away from them, right? Well, babies, there's a way, you know, to approach this um, quite differently. And we're coming out of hiding, don't you see, in order to accomplish this uh, reality, see. So there, in other words, you know, the angels are sneaky, too. And so is creation. Now, I know for some of you, you don't even know what an angel is. That's okay. You don't have to, man. You know, but you'll know your own heart soon enough. And then you'll start to know what an angel is. <laughs> And see, you'll see the service that you've given in this reality. And here you thought you were just hanging out and not really up to much, you know, just trying to get through. Yeah, right, baby, right. You know what was really going on, you know. Huh. You were just biding your time until you could reveal the sky caster side of yourself. That's the deal, see. And that's what makes it real. And guess what? When you pop off, they're in the middle of suburbia. Yeah, I know, man. Nobody even knows. Nobody would even suspect. It's a regular Clark Kent, Superman kind of thing, you know. I kind of look at more as Wonder Woman, though. Oh, my God. Oh, oh my heart, my heart. <laughs>
<laughs> I'm getting around, you little clown. Come on now. Cut me a little slack. You know, I am humane, babies, you know. And I still got caught up in all the excitement of the 3D, didn't you? And I shut your mouth then. Don't be talking about me like that. Give me a little humanity, too, okay? Maybe I'll come to you from 3,500 years someday, all right? <laughs> Spread those wings, take flight, and your heart keep it light. Don't take any of this too seriously or too heavily, you know. Just go at your own pace, steady with the flow, man. You know, get the rock and roll, get the rhythm of heart and soul. You know, you'll hear the music that, you know, accompanies you along, actually creates you in this life, and all that goes with you, too. Through you, of course, by you know, singing the divine harmony of your heart at those high vibrational levels that we kind of cut ourselves off from a long time ago, but guess what? We still heard that song, don't you know? In time, it's kind of hard to hear. That's why we had to have rock and roll to remind us, you know, in time of what it's like to be living. Well, let's say beyond time, you know. So we come back 3,500 years ago. We went back into the past another 3,500 years and then came forward a little tweak here, a little tweak there, 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 you know, the whole time. Letting darkness get away with the undivine and letting people degenerate themselves to their darkest. I mean, people as cave persons were far more in content and happy than the folks in this industrial world that you're living in now. Let alone the past few hundred, a couple thousand years, man. Been just been hell on hell in a handbasket, babies. You know, some of humanity's darkest moments lived right to this moment. You know, some of the coldest hearts ever unleashed on humanity rising to the top but guess what that's just scum on the pond coming to the top so the sun can dispose of it properly get it to break down and go back to the bottom where it belongs you know <laughs> be the fertilizer for a future generation man another blossoming lotus floating on that pond just because you know you let yourself rise up in the sun to build you down down you going up as a lotus you come, see? That's the process we're involved in. That's what we started 3,500 years in the future, which was 3,500 years in the past, which means we're getting it together at last because we've been cleverly manipulating the reality a little bit here and a little bit there. And you Okay, you don't believe in manipulation, baby? How many times you've been, been manipulated or at least attempted to be manipulated already today, see? There's nothing to argue with. We're used to it, so we don't even notice it. You know, it doesn't mean we go along with it. If you notice it, you're done with it. So then your programming goes differently. But still, there's other suggestions and other people throwing it at you and other energies and powers trying to move you this way and that. See, that's the human existence. To know the push-pull, the polarities, you know, the action-reaction status that is not a reality whatsoever. You see, this whole world, is a total, complete, absolute illusion. Holographic in every little bit of it. Yet, it has such a solid feel. And the feelings you feel are very real. When you're living them, you know, when somebody's putting you down or bringing you around or building you up, saying, I love you, let's go. You know, and all that good stuff. I don't, you know, I mean. But it's still just part of the drama, the flow. A hint, a suggestion of our capabilities in our own heart, in our own empowerment. See, because we know we're not empowered in that 3D. We know we have to seek it out somehow. We've been looking for it all over the place, but it's always reflecting back to you what's inside of you. No matter what you find out there, it's just saying, hey, look here. Take a look inside. This is where the ride is. This is where the magic is. This is where the flow is. This is where creation begins, don't you know? I don't care. You are the God of Father. You got a mother. I don't care. It's the same in you as it is everyone else, too, you know? You're just playing a projected role in a projected reality, projected from the heart into this absurd portrayal of 3D. <laughs> Now listen, I've lived, lived it about as hard as anybody can. I, I know it could have been a hell of a lot worse. I'm blessed that it is not, you know. And that right now, all of that that we've been through, all of us, not just myself, but all of it, is bringing us back together again. Maybe one heart here, one heart there, a hundred hearts there, a thousand hearts there, etc. You can imagine how this is 
creating itself. You know it had to come about kind of as a semi-secret. I mean, you know, our, our brothers and sisters on the darker way, they knew it was coming. They knew they'd have their day. They just didn't know when, you know. So they've just been trying to grab all they can, but see, they've been notice how through the generations, the those people that have been manipulating from the background have gotten worse and worse at it, not better. You know, they got one simple little formula they always stick to, you know, which is always the rough way. Never do it easy, always go the rough way. <laughs> but see, that's the effect of polarities, or at least absurd effect of polarities because polarities in this you know scientific world don't exist science knows already that it's a hologram and they figured it that out quite some time ago and as a result they started discovering how to move the hologram around a little bit and that's how people got so screwed up 3500 years from now and that's what we had to recover from by going 3500 years into the past now these are rough approximations in time it can go you know stretch and f short whatever it wants to be but anyway that's the approximation of a span of 7,000 years man you know total degeneration for that 7,000 then a reversal and a, a regeneration introduced you know 3,500 years ago see so right now we're in the centering point of that 7,000 years we're at the three and a half mark, whatever the hell that is. <laughs> and see, that's why we're feeling the centering energies. And today is a breakthrough sort of day because it's a full moon day for one. And for the other, that's just symbology that the universe uses, the hologram uses to keep us mm, from awakening too fast. But to let us know it's come, that it's here already, see. So you've noticed every full moon for about the past three years, four years, has been progressively, energetically, uh, a little stronger and a little stronger. And even the brightness of it has gotten a little brighter and a little brighter. You know, the forces of uh, darkness here on this earth have tried to cloud the skies up so you can't see all of that. But it's impossible to do that completely without choking the breath out of everyone including themselves they haven't quite been able to go that far just yet because they're still dealing with it kind of in a 3d way even though they understand some of the multi-dimensionality they ain't got the program down yet babies if they did believe you me we'd be living like we are 3500 years from here see but we're not you know we're still free right here we still got our flesh and blood we still got our normal human existence here as warped and as backwards from what our true reality is as it can be it's still the basic format of us don't you see it's the rooted format it's the denser form of us the smaller you know lighter form but believe it or not despite all the heaviness we carry around here and all the warfare to go with it eh? <laughs> see this is the day this all changes and you know as it has been before it comes in kind of quietly it won't be you know uh, well if we had time to go it wouldn't be but a couple of hundred years before people realize what had really happened 200 years ago you see which is right now is what i'm talking about see the way they've done in the past same way folks don't really get it when, it when they're getting it but when it's got and it has a little time to ripen in then they say oh my god look what happened there wow we didn't even realize that see that's the nature and extent of consciousness it comes in just like subliminal suggestion but you see it very directly only your mind just can't quite comprehend it yet your heart has to soften it up for a while and you know i'm talking in multi-generational things too it's each generation takes what their parents have been working on and begins to work it out in themselves you know every generation does that you see all of us that's how it's done in the 3d you know it's a long chain man you know well we're breaking the chains man of the past at last because we understood that 3500 years in the future man <laughs> so we fixed it you know we well they've been fixing elections you think if you can't fix an election you can't fix a creation well i think you can man you know in a very positive and enlightened sort of way but using the same kind of uh, energetic skullduggery is you know the, the the darker side do in other words the sleight of hand not the torment man well, yeah we do this the exact opposite because we're real and that's how we had to hold that energy if it's going to be the really absurd and, and dark shit's got to be the really absurdly light shit too man you know the stuff that's way too fluffy <laughs>
<laughs> that's what rock and roll. See, that was the symbol we were waiting for in the 3D, the holographic reality was the rock and roll. As it began to show, then we knew we were getting our medicine back together, don't you know? Because that took that polarity and made a complete absurdity out of it, because that's what it is. And then began to show you how to put it back together. That's the nature of this good old time rock and roll. Moves you heart and soul. It's hard to sit still, especially early in the day when Grandpa's got it, you know, playing in that multi-dimensional way. Couldn't do without my dog, though. You know, dog is our co-pilot, man. Little Okiwan Kenobi, the yogi wonder dog who's made a lifetime study out of the movement of the heart, man. I'm telling you, this dude is sharp as a tack, man. You don't believe me? Ask him. He'll tell you. <laughs> He's a hot dog. <laughs> Little weenie dog, man. Well, we always got to pay him tribute at least once a day because he really does keep our life underway. Give us something steady, you know, et cetera. Something to deal with all the time. Stuff like that, man. But also, the most forgiving little heart, the most precious little soul you'd ever want to rock and roll with, don't you know? Well, and then you start to realize that this same preciousness extends into all this reality, if you'll let it, especially yourself. See, that's what dog is here to reflect back to us, you know? The real nature of what you would call God, which is inside of all of us anyway. But anyway, that's what dog is. Dog is that loyal heart. That forgiving heart it can take just about anything and come back for more. I mean, when he knows that you really love him. Now, that doesn't mean he won't bite your hand if you've been a mean and wicked person, you know. But they'll let you go a long, long way before they do that. Won't they? Yeah. No kitty's less patient, I know. But dog holds that energy, that loyalty, that loving energy. It just shows you how that mother love really works. It's divine and steady, no matter what you're up to or how out of control or in control, etc. You are of your life and so forth. It's just right there. Let's go, let's go. I want to be with you. I'll be with you all the time, all the time, all the time. Don't you leave me home. Wine, 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 etc. You know, it's such a sweet, innocent, loving energy. It's why we like to associate with dog and probably treat them better than we do our own kids sometimes. I'm telling you, sad as that may be. Let's see, we're, we're, we're checking out all that so we don't have to, you know, even think about it. Think beyond it. See beyond the 3D. Live in what comes to you naturally. As you go through this musical tunage, methodically, uh, multidimensionally, man, as I, I tell you what, is this is tunage arranged. I mean, it's, you know, expression here by the very universal heart within yourself, man. That's what makes it so precious and dear here. So you see, time kind of goes in cycles, just like kind of what we've been describing, you know. We kind of tend to think of it in linear terms that, you know, day to day, month to month, year to year, etc. Hour to hour, minute to minute, moment to moment. But see, it's really, it's kind of a circle outside of the singular moment that exists forever, you know. It's got that donut effect, you see, and there's many different levels to it. We call those parallels and dimensions, as we view it here in this restricted little holographic world we call the 3D. But the real tendency is for time to get you to step outside of time so you don't live it anymore. That's why it goes in cycles. That's why it isn't linear, you know. It's basically a 7,000-year cycle, you know, though it can vary a bit, you know. It's flexible as all get out. But see, there's all these potential timelines we're living on. Now, we wake up 3,500 years in the future and realize we got to go 7,000 years in the past and start manipulating time a bit, you know, from back in their experience, in other words, to bring forward a stronger energy in this day of 2017, a day made right there in your heart, which is the gateway to heaven, which is, of course, paradise itself and then some. See, that's what we meant when we took you on flight 777 a while ago. We flew right past paradise and heaven, don't you know, to the headwaters, the, you know, the place that is real. The place where all blossom forward from, deal. You see what I mean, Jelly Bean? It's, it's, that's the way it is. It's just the way we are. And it all comes from a singular bubbling spring. There in the high country of Spring Creek. 
Yeah, right here, man. And it is high country here, man. From the beginning, from your heart. Rock and roll that if you listen to it just right, don't you know? It moves you heart and soul. And it's the medicine of integration, don't you know? We take those cycles we've been living. And see, each time we go on a different one, you know, because we do. We live it multidimensional all the time. We plan our experiences here. But, of course, they're very spontaneous, too. They See, that's the the reality of change not choice change you see because the choice is made in a, a larger collective there is no choice there's only going with a flow of love don't you know that's choosing itself see See, it's the whole idea that you can be opposite of love is only experienced on the earth reality in this 3D. Oh, it's the only place where it is. Everywhere else, everything else is collectively held and collectively conscious. And lacking in the personal experience thereof. And see, some tried to think humans should be just like everybody else and tried to remake us in that 3,500 year timeline extending from here. And, you know, but it's just a timeline. It's just a possibility. See, even though we lived it and came back from it 3,500 years in the future to 3,500 years in the past, it's like right here, right now, all completed. So we lived like a dozen chapters of life. So six of them ahead and six of them from behind to get to this moment where we step what? Inside of time, so we're outside of time. We're over with time. Time is up. <laughs> now we begin to experience beyond the 3D. We start to live it multidimensionally, see? And time doesn't exist. When you live in expansion, there's just that constant growth in creation. That's all there is, baby. But it's beautiful. And we love every moment of it because, what? Well, it's a rock and roll harmony that, you know, we can only remind ourselves through all this musicality here in the 3D. But, baby, is it a blessing to be living in the 3D? Indeedy. Because now as you expand, you find life, I mean, almost unimaginably grand. But you got to take it frame by frame, one step at a time, baby. Don't get in a hurry. Just be the divine right here, right now. What does that mean? What do you mean? You know, I'm not, you know, I'm not God. I'm not God. Well, babies, don't worry about it that way. Don't even look at it that way. Just be a part of what creation is made of you and embrace that. And let it refine itself because creation certainly works in harmony with you if you will work in harmony with it too, you see. Now, I just walking around a few moments ago here while we were telling you how we were just like, you know, your one true love forever and ever in that rock and roll sort of way. I had to take my dog out, you know, and I'm looking around and saying, this, this feels so real. And it just feels so right in a way with all of the cold and the warmth and the sun and the atmosphere and the little plants and the birds, bees and trees and all of our little doggies and all of our other little domesticated things. <laughs> Thank God we don't have to give them diamond rings. <laughs> See, we're getting over the ultimate cosmic joke, the seriousness, the heaviness that we let fix upon us right from the time of our childhood for the most part to keep us in the 3d fixed in this dumbed down reality where we could hardly realize you know uh, any extension of our life we go from the full presence to almost no presence in a heartbeat or two here in this 3d it's quick for little children don't you see uh, you to, and then you got to start toughening yourself up so you can exist in this reality what a farce you know, I regret all the tough love I ever practiced yet. It was a loving thing and as much as I could muster in that moment. So there it is. And there it was. And there it shall be in that funky little timeline we call history. But really, you know, you never put it behind you. It's a part of you now. All of that experience. But see, it refines you. Same way that fires temple, tempers metal, or the same way that manure breaks down the basic elements and gives life to flowers, birds, bees, and trees, and everything else that you see. Okay? It's, it's the cycles and the seasons, but they just suggest to you the reality we're living in. You see, we've only got like, maybe it's a 12,000 year cycle. I don't know exactly what it is. Who cares? But it's a cycle like that. 
And we just keep repeating it all. Each time we do, each time we go around that little twist in the spiral of life, we're taking a little different trail because we're a little higher and a little higher and a little higher. And ultimately you realize the center which exists in all moments in time. That's how we can travel through time because there is a center. You see, and time is a spiral of cycles. <laughs> I know it's kind of wild to consider, but it's the rock in the roll. See, stretches your heart, don't you know? Get your mind to accept it a little more because it knows truthful aspects when it begins to see. It might be a little afraid of it because it's like, you know, you got to let go of the fixed thing in the 3D, that thing that gives it reality. You got to know the truth and that sometimes will make you think you're losing your looney tunes, man, because, wow, I'm telling you, it's so far beyond what we know here. Yet, it's what we've known all along in our heart, dear. We've never let it go. We've always known that, that we were the dreamers caught up in our own dream, but that we were doing it to fulfill a far grander scheme to learn the reflection and the polarities, the upside down, so we could appreciate the right side up. To get ourselves pulled off into a land of fakery and to where the point where you got to be really street smart to live in the 3D, or you just got to, you know, stay low and don't make too much noise and just go along with the flow of it, you know, and never grow because of it. Yet, even in an excruciatingly painful life like that is the greatest gain there could ever be. Because this is pain that's known nowhere beyond the 3D. Only here can you get it. Only here can you let that pain refine you into the ecstatic existence of creation. And accept the presence of the divine within every little particle of yourself, let alone what it's assembled itself into. And let it reassemble itself as it will. As you find yourself kind of drawing yourself out of time. Back towards the center of everything. Now, you're going to be a little frightened and afraid because we've been programmed to be afraid of our truth. Now, not everybody will, but not everybody obeys. Thank goodness, you know. But those of you that still got some programming going on too, well, there it is, man. But you just look at it, love it, embrace it, say thank you for the, the caution you've tried to express here and for the concern for my betterment of person. I appreciate that, you abject thing, you. Let's go rocking, man. Let's just step outside of this let's step into truth for a change i think we can handle it don't you and your little self will say well hell yeah what was i doing man should i need to hold us behind let's get going on i love this divine see that's how quickly it can change and that's what you're here to quote quote choose you win you never lose you know there is no choice really it's already made so we're just going through the motions the drama of it the experience of it so we can more exquisitely feel the love in it as we make this transitional change and release ourselves from the chains and burdens of the heaviness, the heartlessness of the unreality in which we've been living. And finally accept the ultimate truth that life can only give more life to itself and only love itself into ever more pleasant places of being. That's where all the timelines lead. That's the center of the wheel of time and the avenues of time. It's also the center of the donut of creation, as we call it, because that donut is metaphorically representing the reality in which we live, the expansive nature of a rising donut to just grow forever, right from that little seemingly whole place in the middle there that doesn't seem to have anything in it, yet that's where the light of it all comes from. That's what gives it life. That's what gives it its spiraling extension into all of life. No longer spiraling through time, but spiraling outward in great big old horizontal spirals that make up the grand donut that surrounds us and fills us and we live in all of it. That's a sphere now, see? <laughs> Looks a hell of a lot like the Mother Earth in 3D, only quite a bit more spectacular, don't you see? Here on that Everclear Hazy Radio Network, dear, getting it together with old Grandpa and Oki Wong Kenobi and a whole raft of angelic and animalistic presences, all oh, a few ETs thrown in, too. Man, everybody's here, man. It's a party. We're just waiting for the rest to get it clear, man. Well, as soon as they do, we do, right?
Oh, we're in it together. Well, baby, just stay in this flow. Then we've lit the fire once again. Don't. Don't end the medicine of the coyote in that flow. Well, maybe a little wolf too, but you know, I got to explain just a little bit about the difference. See, coyote is the original dog, babies. You know, you got to you got to know that. You know, the wolf come along after him. It's just a bigger variety. But see, there is a distinct difference between the family of wolf and the family of coyote, or the energies thereof. See, wolves they work together in an integrated pack. They got a, a social structure all built in, and everybody knows exactly what they got to do and how they got to do it. And they like a foot ball team or something they just try to be all coordinated in their approach to whatever it is they're doing you see and it's very visible because they move as a singular pack as a singular person each one of them individually but all of them together in that pack don't you see it's an orchestrated thing you know well you know that's one way to flow and you know it's got its its directness don't you know but a coyote man you don't see it it's not visible like that see because coyotes even though we have the pack mentality we work as individual persons you see and we approach it you know conscious of where the pack is and synchronized with them but not in a visible way each path of a coyote is an individual personal path even though it's in sync with the rest of his tribe they're scattered far and wide See, that's the big difference between uh, coyote and wolf. Wolf is very direct. Coyote is mm, a little less than direct, but very effective in its invisible synchronicity, you know, and able to be able to express and see beyond the 3D. You know, yeah, we're coordinated in that 3D too, but at the same time, we're coordinated on through. That's why the coyote's smiling in the background. Because he knows we've already got in the flows of the real medicine of the heart, don't you know? Because he's there to demonstrate it day after day in a very personal sort of way. Each coyote is the sum total of creation. Even when it's chasing down your bunny rabbit, it can't be helped. That's nature in motion. But see, if you want to have something besides a hateful emotion toward that old coyote, you got to see the wild nature in yourself. You got to know that you were born wild, and that is your nature is wildness. You know, a life that doesn't know limits or limitations of any sort. A love that only wants to exuberate itself more fully present into the reality around it, man. You know, yeah, and that's a, a new use of verbiage, I reckon, that exuberate because that's what it takes. Exuberance to exuberate yourself into the heart of creation, which is our truth. To see beyond the fixed nature of this reality and the firmness in it. To start to see beyond the savagery, the built-in savagery, the, the automatic nature of it, you see. To see what's really natural beyond the 3D, you see. I mean, every animal, every plant, every little grain of sand, etc. has its own little family uh, arrangement. And it's in synchronicity with all of the other family arrangements, which is just like atoms. Be I mean, little bits of light becoming protons, neutrons, atoms forming from that, and cellular stuff from that, molecular stuff from that, etc. You know, until you've got a living, animated person in creation of one form or another. But all born of that same essential subatomic light, man. And every one of us made of the lightness the brightness, the exuberance for our reality. That's why everything we do in the animal kingdom is passion. And humans, in a less than passionate way, yet we're capable of far more passion than anything else around us. At least we think that's the way we are. And we suppress the hell out of it because we don't want anybody to know that we're that passionate about it. And then we put it off in something like political or the, or the, or the, or the uh, romance area or something like that, you know, sports, you know, anything to distract ourselves from the essential truth of the heart. So we can keep living it in this dumb old way and think that savagery is just built in and that's nat nature in motion, which is exactly the opposite.
of the true reality of the heart in which we live. Creation cares so greatly for itself that it provides for itself no matter what form it's taken or where it's gone with it. Even into the 3D and all of its built-in savagery. There's a poetry in that. There's a symmetry. There's a beauty in the sacrifice and the sacrificee. <laughs> Sacrificer and the sacrificee. Those that are predatory and can't help it, they are that way by nature. But there are those who know how to dance with that nature, and they are called coyote. They know the lightness in that inherent savagery. They know the truth beyond this 3D, and that's why they're smiling and singing all the time, don't you see, or a lot of the time. And that's when they're mostly together, is in their singing. That's when coyote reveals its true nature in its song, not by its obvious and visible behavior but by the magic just beyond that the synchronicity with all of life which is what its song represents you know some of the original tones in rock and roll don't you know with those coyote singings man now i don't know if you've ever been out in the desert camped out all alone and just listening to the hackles and the jackals and the cackles carrying on out there you know or maybe a total stone cold silence and there in the middle of the night, as you're just getting ready to retire away from the campfire and go crawl into the old overstuffed sleeping bag and comfortably uh, visualate with the stars for a while. And just about that time, you hear a party uh, over the ridge, the sounds of many human voices gathered together. And they're kind of cackling back and forth. They're just so happy. Everybody's engaged in a great conversation. And it sounds like they're right over the hill from you, from your little campsite right there by that little spring creek, eh? Yes, indeed, eh? So, man, you, 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 you tune in, you hear, and, and little by little the conversation changes and starts to take on a higher pitch a higher tone a, a synchronistic tone and pretty soon there is a divine harmony going on of coyote's song that's so fat so full that it feels all the emptiness you felt in that abject silence of a moment ago and surrounds you with a spectacular colorful nature of the true life you're living there in that subtle grand great darkness which is so filled with light in the middle of the night that it puts you know shame to your firelight all of life is a glow in the song of the heart don't you know the medicine of the coyote deeply affecting the flow as you realize it's the coyote way that you want to go because that's the way of the heart the way of creation, that is to know, to see beyond the life in which you're living, this 3D, to see the heart in which you're given, and the natural synchronicity built into all of that, to let the soft nature of this love then expand graciously, happily, so greatly, so through your life that you can't help but sing about it. And it becomes the medicine of rock and roll, the medicine of heart and soul, the music and the movement, the divine rhythm, the divine harmony, the divine love that sings itself into all of creation. See, and this is what great spirit is. It is, it is, it is the resonation, the harmony, the grand symphony of life given in a person singing all that into being, a singular voice at the presence, the center of it all. And what is voice, song, an unseen thing, a vibration that is felt, which bring forward visions of creation and the lives in which we live. That's the rock and roll reality of the coyote medicine, the spring creek, you know, the waters of life, the flow of love deeply and gratefully affected by the cactus and the coyote, both of which only seem to be leading us in the ways of clarity, focus, reality, truth, which is the love alive in everything.
It just makes you shiver underneath all that woolly wool and the dog hair, don't you know? And just want to rock and just want to roll and just want to be the expansive medicine of your own heart and soul forevermore, synchronized in that grand song of life. The one you're singing right now babies that's the flow of medicine here on the hazy radio network right from spring creek the headwaters of life flowing through the heart of this old man don't you know this old universal dj that's got you down man and bringing you around man because we're coming around right along with you me and little oki Wan kenobi and a whole bunch of old ancient grandmothers too coming to life inside of me inside of you inside of all of this coyote life too man Ain't, you, ain't, ain't it good that we got the cactus clear here to help us get it, dear? Oh, I tell you, mm, when you merge and harmonize in the grand symphony of life, you appreciate the magic of every particle of life and of its necessity of being here, including that little particle that you are. You know, the little prism of life through which the golden light of creation passes itself into being into the rainbow of life that surrounds you and the colorful nature of the song of creation in which you're living, babies. Now, if you don't experience paradise right now and hell, well, it's only because you're still too much of a coyote to allow it. You see, there's a little bit of resistance built into you, but that's okay, man. You get it one way or another. You cannot resist the flow of the music of life, don't you know? It's the medicine of your heart and soul and the reality of your own paradise, man. That's why we get it on so nice, you see, in this rock and roll sort of way, changing your whole reality as you begin to sing that song. The coyote song that goes on and on forever, man, through the heart of great spirit. The great spirit in you, the great spirit in me, and everything else that you see. That's our song, our reality. <laughs> Babies, you're getting it clear here at Spring Creek. Yeah, from the beginning, man. Only on that. Hazy Radio Network, baby. So rocking this little network around since Grandpa and friends are coming around. You each and every day, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. Mountain Time. Adjust your little time piece accordingly and make sure you're here every day, dear. Ooh, because this medicine is medicine you want, you know, on a daily basis because it's always a reminder of our true attitude. It's beyond stasis, man, baby. We live in the rock and roll world of reality. Ooh, set you free.